and since everything is divided into layers it's very easy for me to the same way I did different layers for each colors of the hair I'm doing the same thing for the stroke so each stroke will only affect a certain layer of color giving me much more control on how everything blends and once I have to erase certain areas I know exactly what I'm erasing or not once we start to get the whole mass of the hair working we can start to see what's blending correctly or not some strands are way too strong and start too early and others are kind of missing so I'm adding some darker ones to define the central mass of the hair so he has some kind of two lines on each side and then darken everything and then always play with the values of each layer and how they all blend together and then checking the way things are looking in 3D seeing how some lines don't blend very well or how maybe even the silhouette has to be changed if some edges have to be turned or sometimes having to add extra geometry to compensate for how I actually want the hair to look once again using the brush to delete strands that are too obvious and then I'm going to use a brush that has hair like style texture so it will help me to disguise the most obvious connections between the different tones so I'll use it to mask some areas to make new strands and then to see how everything blends together I also feel that the hair needs some extra geometry to pop out the big clump of hair in the middle so I'm putting some extra loops around and cleaning up the geometry and making sure the silhouette is more obvious for the middle clump and then I'll just go in and add the final touches any color balance that I feel will help and fixing any major issues so just mostly polishing out the hair to make it that much better then I just quickly export it and check it in engine to see how it actually looks and then I move on to the next part in this case the shirt so the first step just as before is cleaning up the renders we have for the normal maps and the AO in this case we have some bumpiness going on in the color that needs to be cleaned up I usually like to use the pen tool to create my mask areas since it creates quite a strong and defined area but still has the a bit of organic way to it since you can apply curves and then change the masking from one side to the other and paint one side and then the next and then if required blur it out a bit as usual it's always a good practice to jump between Photoshop and Max to see how the results are looking and if we're actually painting it correctly and improving mostly to see if the edges no longer have that strange pinching you get because the normal maps got pushed and once I'm done with the normal maps I'll do the same thing for the AO always using the normal map as a reference to make sure that I'm making the same fixes in the same areas for this I use different overlay modes 
so the group of layers for the normal maps I just apply a multiply or a overlay and I can see how they both look and I can use it as a guideline once this is done then I'll start applying color the same way I did with the head I'll use the concept art as the main guideline and start by applying a multiply value I also quite like to use layer styles so for example when doing the stripes the ties have two tones but for the darker tone I'll use an inner glow with a multiply for the same tone so this allows me to whenever I draw a stripe for the tie it will automatically get the right tone it saves me time and it's easy to adapt and if I want to change tones later on it's much much easier than having to paint two tones inside the same mask you also have to be careful not to overuse it so usually try to do something that you would always also do with a brush but in this case you just try to save time by using a layer style also always go to max to see how the result is looking this is like one of the practices you have to do all the time since your final result is in 3D then you have to see how it's looking because no one will ever look at the 2D sheet what they want to see is the final 3D result I also like to go and grab real textures and use them as a mixture for certain parts in this case our object is cartoonish so we have to be quite careful not to exaggerate in using too much real stuff otherwise it loses that feeling but for small details like the suspenders, bottom area which is obviously leather or maybe the shoes it's a good idea to use reference mostly what I want out of it is this crack effect which I could paint it but it would take much longer and it would be too cartoonish and by using a texture with a high contrast and setting it to a very very low opacity level I can get that effect going on after these main details are done I'll move on to the stripes so these I consider were quite a challenge to me at first I tried to draw them directly on the sheet but they would get too much distortion in 3D so I ended up having to push the low res mesh into ZBrush project it into Photoshop and draw the stripes directly there so he, ZBrush will take care of the distortion for me and then I go on and I tweak them in Photoshop also the way the stripes work on a shirt is quite interesting because they follow the pattern of the way the shirt was sewn so in the front they go up on the sides they go lateral and then the back has two parts it has the back part on the upper area from the shoulders which is horizontal and then the bottom part is vertical just like the front once again in our concept we didn't have these details because the different views were black and white so what I had to do research find out how the stripes actually work and then try to emulate that when creating them for the stripes in Photoshop I'm once again using the path tool because it's got a very useful option of creating a stroke path so I create the stripes I want to have an idea over they will be with the path tool then I can move them around dynamically and only once I'm happy with their position do I go there again and apply a stroke path based on where the lines are I also didn't try to do a perfectly correct stripes since this is a not realistic model so they're slightly wacky but slightly realistic and I hope once I create the actual te texture the specularity to create the silk effect will give it a boost in realism
So always trying to find this balance between realistic and more relaxed cartoonish is quite an interesting thing to do. Also I might as well say there's a peculiar thing going on in ZBrush when you're using the image plugin where he does not detect that the image, the Z app link has updated. So all you have to do is Alt tab back to ZBrush and then back to Photoshop and he will refresh information and realize that the image actually changed and you can drop the new image back into ZBrush. So once I'm happy and I have made all the stripes for the first set of stripes in the shirt, in this case the front, I put it back into the original texture and I'll clean up all the excess stripes that I don't need. So I'll do this step by step, first the front, then the back, and then the arms, and then cleaning always the intersections. And once again the good thing of doing this projection with ZBrush is that he will take care of any issues you get with seams since you'll calculate where the stripe should connect. Also I'm always working in black and white because what I'm actually doing is I'm creating a mask that will hide the color for the stripes. So keeping everything as black and white and making it as a mask is much much easier instead of trying to actually create the stripes in the color I want them to be.